Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about how to put a schedule in a Johnson Controls controller. Uh, now, the the newer controllers, anything that starts with the M4 or F4, uh, all have time clocks built into them. So they're, they're all considered advanced controllers. Uh, now the older generation, uh, the PCGs and the FECs, uh, the PC a was the advanced controller that had all the, the advanced time clock built into it, more memory and all that. And on the Johnson side, the medicine side, it would be the FAC instead of the FEC. The A was the advanced controller that had all, the, all these features in here. So uh, schedules, trending, and alarm all can be done under the advanced tab here on the bottom half of your screen. If you don't see this information here, you'll need to go to define hardware and make sure you have an advanced controller selected. Obviously, I have the CVE, which is the VAV controller with IP, and that is considered advanced because it does have a built-in time clock. So under schedules here, we can build a schedule just by right-clicking Add Schedule, go down to the Schedules, and then we can start editing our schedule here. Now, um, you can rename your schedule here. I'll just put VAV in front of schedule there. Uh, obviously, we want to enable backnet priority. We can write it at whatever backnet priority from 1 to 16. Uh, scheduled object type, I'm not going to touch that yet. And I'll show you why. So if we start down here at display mode, and go to scheduled items and click on the plus and go to the item that we want to schedule which will be the aux schedule in this case it'll auto populate this for us here so i can go now go to weekly schedule click on that plus button and i'll just start out with unoccupied um, all the way around then I'll throw in an occupied, let's say Monday through Friday from seven to five. So here's our seven, and we're gonna go Monday through Friday unoccupied again at five, which is 1700 hours. Now we have our schedule built. We can also add exception dates to this, any kind of exceptions that we want through an exception schedule. And we can choose that uh, some days, date ranges, day of the week. So we'll start with a date. We obviously know some dates here. We can do uh, December 25th here in North America. A lot of retail stuff closed that day. A lot of um, offices. So any day of the week, hit OK. We add that in. We also have to do our exception events. Don't forget that. So we want it unoccupied all day. Boom, done. We can also throw in a week and day combination. So something like Thanksgiving. So we can go November, uh, fourth week of the month on a Thursday. Boom. So that throws it in there. We'll do our exceptions again. There we go. Now, if we wait until the end, we can do all our exceptions at once just by highlighting all of them, I believe. Uh, we can also have uh, some day ranges, so multiple days from this day to that day. Uh, we can also have a calendar reference. So I don't have a calendar built yet, but let's see how that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply, and then I'm going to show you kind of what that does up here. It added this little symbol right here to our aux schedule so that we know that there is a schedule assigned to that, a backnet schedule inside of this controller. So uh, that's a neat little feature there. So we know what's kind of driving that guy. We need to come down and look at advanced. So calendars, we can add a calendar. Here's our calendar. We can add, we can rename the calendar, anything we want. And then we can add dates to this. So like I said, 25th. So if we didn't want to do, uh, go in there for, 
all the dates. Say we were closed the day after Thanksgiving, we could do that easily here. We got Memorial Day there. Um, some other dates, uh, 4th of July, boom, there. Done like that. And we can save this. We can also uh, have a global calendar. So we can do one calendar on uh, one controller in the building and as long as they're all linked together on one BACnet system. We can do the device ID of the uh, device and then the calendar ID, which would be, you know, this guy right here is 10010. We can reference all the controllers to this calendar right here just by going in and adding a calendar and looking at the global and just filling out one local one. Uh, so that's a, a nice feature there. So we'll leave those dates in there and we'll hit save. Now we can apply and we can go back down to our schedule. Exception schedule. Edit the new calendar reference. Calendar. Okay. Obviously we want this unoccupied. Boom. Okay. So now all the dates that we did in that calendar are going to be unoccupied. We can hit apply, and that's going to drive our schedules. So that's how easy it is to build a schedule with exceptions in Johnson Controls.